Thank you. It's great to be back here. I was back here in 2007. I want to congratulate President Mims, the Board of Trustees, everybody else for the tremendous improvement I've seen this university in the seven years I've been gone. I also thought the, the choir was absolutely outstanding. To the championship, lacrosse women's team, congratulations. I could go on and on. But as King Henry VIII said to his third wife, ain't going to keep you long. And I'm not going to keep you long here tonight. I'm humbled to be here. 10% of you won't remember 10% of what I said 10 minutes after I said it. The next few minutes, I want to share thoughts and ideas. I'm not going to preach to you. I'm not going to lecture to you. I'm going to share things I believe from the bottom of my heart. The stories I share with you are absolutely true. And I hope that you realize how fortunate you are to be at a university where you can express your faith in God. What a great thing. Oh, we all have faith in God, but it flounders from time to time. I can't begin to tell you how many times I prayed when Michigan was on our three-yard line. Oh, God, you stop about change my life. You know, it's... It, it, we have this, I, no doubt in my mind that God fed the Israelites for 40 years in the desert. I have no, I, no doubt whatsoever that God took water and turned it into wine at the wedding feast. And I have no doubt that he fed 5,000 people with two fishes and five loaves. But see, God, I can't trust you with Michigan. You just don't know how good they are. It's like everything else. You have to have a faith and you have to have a belief. And I can't begin to tell you how important that has been in my life. And I hope that you will always cherish the religious freedom you have and the faith and belief and continue to maintain it long after you leave Benedictine College. And we all have a tendency to believe certain things. I want you to understand this. I've been 19. You've never been 85. So, <laughs> so I just want to share some, some things I really and truly believe. I'm going to make five assumptions of the people in the audience. I'm going to assume that, number one, you want to be successful professionally. I'm going to assume also you want to have a good, solid, personal life. I'm going to assume you want to feel needed. I'm also going to assume you want to feel secure about your future. And the last assumption I'm going to make, you want to go to heaven. And it's not complicated. I want to give you a simple philosophy how to do it. I want to talk to you about things I wished I knew when I was 20 years of age. It's, it's not complicated. We complicate life and we don't have to. Do you realize there are only seven colors of the rainbow? Look what Michael Angelou did with those seven colors. There's only seven musical notes. Look what Beethoven did with seven musical notes. There's only 10 numbers. Look what Bernie Madoff did with 10 numbers. <laughs> I'm not saying it's always good, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Everybody needs four things in your life. Everybody needs something to do. Everybody needs someone to love. Everybody needs something to hope for. Everybody needs someone to believe in. But hoping for something's important. And I hope each and every one of you will sit down and determine what you want to do with your life, what goals you have, what purpose you have. I never had any goals growing up. I was in the lower third of my high school class. If it was not for people like me, there could have been no upper half of the class. I'm just on the bottom. <laughs> I remember in the first grade, Sister Mary Baptista wanted to know, what do you want to be? I want to be a lawyer, a doctor, a policeman. I wanted to be a garbage collector. She said, that's weird. I said, they only work on Tuesdays. Oh, that's, that's a great thing I wanted. So it's just a, how we look at things. But have some goals and have some objectives. But I want to give you a simple plan that will allow you to reach the five assumptions I made at the beginning. They aren't complicated. They're just simple rules. Rule number one is do what's right. Do what's right and avoid what's wrong. You have any doubt, get out the Bible. 
There's never a right time to do the wrong thing, never a wrong time to do the right thing. As I would say to our team, it's not right to find a teammate's wallet before he lost it. It's called stealing, son. But just, you know what's right. You know what's wrong. You just do what's right. Rule number two, you do everything to the very best of your ability. Not everybody can be all American. Not everybody can be all conference. Everybody can be the best they're capable of being. Not everybody can be an A student. But everybody can be the best they're capable of being. You do everything the best of your ability, not because somebody's looking, or somebody's going to applaud you, or somebody's going to give you an award. It's just the way you live. Whatever I do, I want to do to the very best of my ability. And it's so important. And when you do what's right, to have the proper attitude. See, what you're capable of doing is determined by the amount of talent God gave you. What you actually do is determined by your motivation. But how well you do something is your attitude. You may be capable of running 109.5, but if you aren't motivated to run it, you aren't even going to do it. And if you do do it, how well you do something is going to be determined by your attitude. We can't let other people determine our attitude. It's like anything else. When we was at University of Notre Dame, we are going to play Florida in the Sugar Bowl. We were an underdog. I felt we'd win. Nobody else thought we would. I took the team to more I took my wife and my four children to Orlando for two days before we went to the Sugar Bowl. And I took them out to dinner. I'm never happier when I'm with my family. We have four children, they're all girls, but two. I'm real proud of that fact. <laughs> but I also want to say this. No matter what you accomplish in this world, no matter how much success you have, no matter how much money you make, if you aren't successful as a husband or a wife and a parent, you failed. And I've never said a negative thing to my wife. In 59 years, we're married in front of our children. Now, in the bedroom, that's different, but it's so important to understand that you love their mother. It gives a child a sense of security you can't provide anywhere else. But we're going down there, and we go out to eat, and a waiter came up, and he recognized me. He said, you're Lou Holtz, head coach at Notre Dame, aren't you? And I said, yes, sir. And I took out my pen thinking he wanted an autograph. He said, coach, let me ask you a question. He said, what's the difference between Notre Dame and Cheerios? I said, I don't have a clue. He said, Cheerios belong in a bowl, Notre Dame doesn't. <laughs> now, this upset me. I'm in Florida. We're going to play them in the Sugar Bowl. I get mad. And my wife said to me, you're going to let somebody you never met before, never going to see again, doesn't care a thing about you, you're going to let them ruin this evening because something stupid he said. She said, you cannot let other people dictate your attitude. And she was right. My attitude changed. We had a wonderful evening. It felt so good. Later in the evening, I called the waiter back over. And I said, son, let me ask you a question. What's the difference between Lou Holtz and a golf pro? He said, I don't have a clue. I said, a golf pro gives tips, which he found out <laughs> when the meal was over. You just got to, your attitude is so critical in what you do and how you do it. So you do everything right. Do the best of your ability. And the rule number three, show people you care. If you listen to nothing else to what I said, I want you to listen to this. You're never again going to meet somebody that doesn't need a kind word or smile and encouragement. You're never going to meet anybody that doesn't have a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm old. I'm so old that my birthday candles cost more than a cake. Now, that's sad. <laughs> but the one thing I have learned, you're always going to have problems. You're always going to have difficulty. That's life. Life is not having no problems, any problems. Life is about being able to handle them and solve them. But, heck, love, have, build a love on a football team, on a university, in a family, or a business. It can't fail. Love is so important. My wife and I were married for 59 years, and we were opposite the same day. She said opposites attract and 
than attack. But I remember June 22nd, 2015, I'm awakened with a fire alarm. Our house was on fire. I awakened my wife. We got out. Uh, we're not sure she would awaken me. We don't know that. <laughs> but there it was, our whole house burning out. A month before then, we're driving in there, and I said to my wife, when you were in high school, did you ever think you'd live in a home this beautiful? My wife's very religious. She said, Lou, this home doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. She said, everything we have belongs to God, and she meant that. So a month later, the house burning down, I said, God, you ought to do something by your house. You know, it burned down. down, down. <laughs> but there we were Saturday, Sunday morning, nothing but ashes. And I said to her, you have 24 hours to cry, to feel sorry for yourself, wall on self-pity. But come 8 o'clock Monday morning, we're never going to look back. We're going to build it bigger and better. Good Lord, put eyes in front of your head so you can see where you're going rather where you've been. And... Lo and behold, I gave her an unlimited budget to rebuild it, and she exceeded it. <laughs> she had that unique ability. To, but building a love, we're opposite nine days. She left me a note and said, Lou, I can't please everybody in the world, so I'm going to stop trying. I'm only going to please one person a day. Today's not your day, and tomorrow doesn't look real promising either. But, <laughs> but that's life. But if you can build love... It's unbelievable. It's unconquerable. We won the national championship at Notre Dame. And we go to the White House for visit with president. And we take a chartered flight back to South Bend, same day. I'm awakened at midnight by the police to tell me that Bobby Satterfield died of a congenital heart defect that day. And Bobby Satterfield's at the White House in the afternoon. He's dead that night. I said to the school operator, call every football player. Tell him I want a team meeting at 730. I wanted to tell him about Bobby Satterfield. We walked in the room. The players were in a great mood. They thought I was going to resign. That's why I called it early. I said, Ben, last night Bobby Satterfield died of a congenital heart defect. One player passed out. I mean, whack. Almost every player in that room cried real tears. If you're in a room, you couldn't tell if Bobby Setterfield was white or black. You couldn't tell if he's offense or defense, first team or third team, scholarship or walk-on from the East Coast to the West Coast. You couldn't tell any of that. Well, you could tell they lost a friend. Bobby Setterfield was a black defensive back senior from Los Angeles, third team walk-on. He wasn't a great player. I couldn't put the film on and say, watch Bobby Satterfield help us win the game. But I will say this. Every time he was in the game, I was confident we'd win by 40. Because if we weren't ahead by 40, he wasn't in the game. <laughs> but they loved him. Not because of what he did, because he's one of them. We find a hundred things to dislike about everybody. But we find a hundred things to like as well. We're caring about people. I have a bumper sticker on my car, and I was married for 59 years before I lost my wife two and a half years ago, and she, she hated the bumper sticker. I loved the bumper sticker, but she hated it. We'd go to Mass 8 o'clock every Sunday. She made me park in the back of the lot and back in so people couldn't see the bumper sticker. I still have that bumper sticker on my car. The bumper sticker said, Jesus loves you. Everybody else thinks you're an asshole. <laughs> but just caring about people. And, getting and, and those are the only three rules you need. You do what's right. You do what's right, you build trust. If you don't have trust, you cannot have a relationship. I had to have a group of players that trusted me, and I could trust them. Marriage based on trust. Everything's trust. How do I get people to trust me? You're a smart group. If you do the right thing, it was important to do the right thing, so you build trust. The second question everybody wants to ask, are you committed to excellence? Do you want to be good? 
You know, you can have all the slogans you want. First will be best, then will be first. You send a message whether you're committed to excellence by the standards you have. The most important thing a professor can do or a coach can do to you is set high standards. Most people don't believe in their talent or how good they can be. The last question everybody asks, do you care about me? Do you care about me because I can run or throw or catch? Building love. And that's all you do. You do those three rules, you'll build trust, commitment, love. Now, I fool around with magic a little bit. This is like any other newspaper. You have front page for people who want to read the news. You have the comics for people who can't read. <laughs> and we have the editorial page for people who can't think. <laughs> now, what's going to happen? Everybody thinks, well, there's something magical about having success, about being happy. That's a choice you make. You know, people are going to tear you up. They're going to criticize you as you go along. But you cannot let, you cannot let that bother you. Don't let people tear you down. Don't let people criticize you. And with you believing them, believe in yourself. Remember, God doesn't make junk. You're a special person. You're on this earth to accomplish special things. I used to do this with a phone book. <laughs> That's... That's when I was a little bit younger, but in any event, there's no such thing as magic. But I promise you this, those three rules will never let you down. Many of you go to sleep. <laughs> That's what I say, it's magic. It's just a choice you make and a decision you make to be successful. But enjoy your stay here. It's a wonderful university. Enjoy it. Make friends, but help people. You follow those three rules, you'll never go wrong. Once again, I think it's the third or fourth time I've been back here, and every time I come back, I'm overwhelmed. It's the changes you've made for the better. So God bless you, and remember, Keep that faith in God. How lucky you are to be at a Catholic university where you can express that. But above all, follow those three rules. You'll never have a problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah. But wait, 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 wait. Whoa, wait, I got to, now wait. Last thing, last thing. You want to be happy for an hour? Eat a steak. You want to be happy for a day? Play golf. You want to be happy for a week? Go on a cruise. Going on a cruise may be like being in jail because you have a chance to drown, but so be it. You want to be happy for a month? Buy a new car. You want to be happy for a year? Win the lottery. You want to be happy for a lifetime? Put your faith in Jesus Christ. He'll never let you down. Thank you. Thank you.